we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. I'm sitting in doing a little bit of the interview section for Aaron while he's out writing more articles. And the guy never stops working. He's a, he's a force to be reckoned with out there, the Blitzschneck. So uh, earlier in the broadcast, he covered uh, the article that Patrick Henningsen wrote, More Furious, U.S. Soldiers Trafficking Arms, Drugs to DEA Agents Posing as Los Zetas. Very disturbing article. Um, I read it uh, and I heard him talk to Alex on Thursday, but I thought it was important enough to bring back up again just to keep putting it out there in the, uh, the blogosphere and seeing if we can make heads or tails of this. Patrick, thanks for joining us. Yeah, nice to be with you, Rob. So what tipped you off to this uh, article here, uh, More Furious? How did you, what, what, what caught your attention on it and um, what made you write this article? Uh, the original tip I got from was from the uh, Minuteman Pack, which is a big border security uh, immigration issue uh, website and political action group. And they had the initial blog, and there was a link to the official uh, complaint, which was at the Department of Justice, South Texas District Court. So I clicked on that, and there was the story, uh, one of the most fascinating and bizarre stories I've seen in recent uh, years regarding trafficking over the border uh, and also drugs, Mexican drug cartels, U.S. Army soldiers, active duty, uh, Afghanistan. It all comes together in this story. It reads like a very dark John Grisham novel. Yeah, and to me, it's like, where are the, quote, bad guys? You know, we've got U.S. Army. There are troops. We have to support them. And then we have DEA agents that are supposed to be fighting this war on drugs. There's no, there's no bad guys here. It's like we're creating our own problem. Hmm. Yeah, one hand, clearly, as, as Alex Jones put it on air Friday morning, we spoke about this story. Uh, what, clearly, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing in this. And, you know, it's very difficult in the world of drugs and the world of drug enforcement. You have a thing called the informant. So there are literally hundreds or thousands of FBI informants, uh, DEA informants, and people who are on the books of the federal agencies who are supposedly, some are undercover and others are actually members of uh, Los Zetos uh, drug cartel or of members of gangs. And they are on the books uh, giving information. So when a deal is going down and if there are uh, in, uh, federal agents investigating, in some cases they don't know the identity of all these informants. And obviously, when the deal goes down, then they will go and they'll they'll then say, uh, my handler is such and such at the FBI's head offices or the head of the DEA, uh, because their uh, identities need to be confidential, uh, apparently, for their security, because there are moles and rats within the FBI and within the DEA and within the gangs themselves. Yeah, it says here uh, in your article, this is, I guess, an AP Huffington Post, Kevin Corley was discharged from the Army on March 13th, according to Army Human Resources. Your article comes out April 5th, so he didn't waste any time uh, reaching out to his network and coming up with, what, 500 pounds of, of marijuana? I mean, what are the details of this particular sting? Well, uh, basically, Cor Corley was uh, the head of security for the gang. Uh, in this gang is also other members of his family, uh, other Corleys, uh, who are based out of South Carolina. Uh, now, Corley uh, was operating uh, out of Texas. I'm not sure the details of where he got his 500-pound, half-a-ton consignment of marijuana. And also, what was what's also interesting is after he, he managed to bring the uh, half a ton of marijuana to South Carolina, and after the DEA apprehended this truck full of marijuana and then let the, uh, the Corley gang uh, drive on while the truck was stopped, um, the Corleys were back uh, doing business uh, only days or weeks later. Um, and, and their business included offering uh, wet work, which is uh, uh, murder for hire, contract services, and also Kevin Corley, interestingly enough, was a drill sergeant for the 4th Brigade and the 4th Infantry based at Fort Carson in Colorado. And they were deployed on multiple tours in Afghanistan. And you also find the 4th, it's an elite uh, combat strike force based out of Fort Carson. He offered to train 40 Los Zetas, US military, U.S. military training standard, using U.S. military manuals with U.S. military weapons, which he was happy to provide to them so long as they would get rid of the serial, serial numbers 
on the guns, for instance, so they couldn't be traced back to him or back to his uh, stockade in uh, at Fort Carson, quite possibly. So uh, there are all, all kind of uh, things going on here, and it's very difficult to tell who was who. For all we know, Kevin Corley himself could be an informant, um, but, and maybe sometimes informants have to do hard time uh, after they're convicted in order to keep their cover and to protect the identities of these other informants in the DEA or the FBI. But in, in, in the end, Rob, it boils down to uh, an extremely dirty business going on and a lot of people using the cover of the law enforcement agencies in order to traffic narcotics or to traffic uh, prostitutes or to do all sort of manner of illegal activities like this. Yeah, which brings us to another article that we covered earlier. War on drugs has failed, say Latin American leaders. Watershed Summit will admit that prohibition has failed and call for more nuanced and liberalized tactics. So that way you don't have your, your, arm, your armed forces or your federal agencies out there um, you know, playing possum with each other as, as to who's doing what. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. It's, and um, I think it's Perez Molina writes, the prohibition paradigm that inspires mainstream global drug policy is, to base, is based on a false premise. premise. The global drug markets can be eradicated. They can't be eradicated. Drugs are always going to be here. They've always been here. They're never going to go away. I mean, as long as there's earth, people are going to be planting pot. They're going to be planting cocoa. That's just the way it is, and you're never going to stop it, and you could either tax it and make money off of it, which will take money away from the banks who launder it, as George Carlin said, and many others, or, um, or you could keep this fake war going and put people in prisons and create another cottage industry, which is, is this prison, prison industrial complex. So uh, what, what do you think on that, that, that the uh, Latin American leaders are finally coming together against the war on drugs? They're saying it's not working. We know it's not working. Yeah, it can, it can never be, you're correct, it can never be eradicated. Uh, whenever you hear a federal official, particularly a U.S. federal official, say that you, we can win the war on drugs, yes, we can eradicate the supply lines and so forth, you know that all this is is recycling of a failed philosophy and a failed initiative, which was the war on drugs, which was kind of launched under uh, President Ronald Reagan and taken to its zeitgeist level under President George Bush Sr. No, the, the war on drugs was a, a complete global failure. And all it's really done is it's, it's really empowered the organized crime aspects, the, the drug cartel aspects. It's made them very wealthy. It's made them very powerful over the last 20 or 30 years. And, and now it's to a point where it's so, the corruption is so deep into the system in countries like Mexico, uh, Honduras, Guatemala, um, Colombia, uh, and many other countries in, in South and Central America, and also now in the United States. So we all know that uh, a, a good percentage of the fresh cocaine that came into this country during the uh, mid, mid 80s, mid to late 80s, was coming in through Mena, Arkansas, uh, a few miles away from Governor Bill Clinton's mansion. And so we know very well about that operation and the numerous testimonies have been made about that. Not many people went to trial, unfortunately, and a lot of dead bodies turned up around the governor's mansion because of that operation. But obviously, one could uh, speculate that Bill Clinton did play his role in the Iran-Contra affair, uh, keeping that line open and keeping it under the radar. And he was paid handsomely only a few years later as he was fast-tracked from nowhere to become the Democrats' presidential nominee and eventually to become president. Sure. And so. I'd like to add, one of those dead bodies was a man named Barry Seal, who was a pilot, who mm -hmm. happened to have George H.W. Uh, Bush's phone number in his back pocket. Makes you wonder. Who's really shipping the drugs out into this country? Hmm? And in the wake of the Fast and Furious scandal, where you have uh, the Department of Justice, and who is really meant to protect the American people, uh, trafficking something like 30,000 or more uh, heavy arms uh, and machine guns, AR-15s and these sort of things, trafficking these drugs into Mexico, into the hands of the drug cartels, and those guns are killing Mexicans, mm -hmm. American border agents, and God knows who else. So in the wake of the Fast and Furious and that's been exposed, you'll find now that the federal agencies will be trying to wrap up as best they can some of these little wet operations they have running. And uh, we could, uh, the Kevin Corley, uh, Corley gang uh, 
uh, more furious scandal that we, we uncovered on Friday, that could very well be an attempt by the DEA to kind of uh, put a line under that particular operation. And who knows how long it's been going, what they've been doing, and how, how far back it goes. But certainly you can't put out of the realms of possibility that there is a, definitely a drug connection uh, with narcotics from Afghanistan into Europe and also into the United States. And also Afghanistan, I, I will remind everybody, is now the number one producer of marijuana on the planet, more than Jamaica, more than Mexico, more than Brazil. It's number one. Okay, that's according to the UN's own study, and that's uh, in 2009. Right. So it's number one in heroin, and it's number one marijuana. And I'll tell you what, we're the best markets for these two drugs and I'll tell you, they are United States and Europe. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that certain members who are doing multiple tours going back and forth between the U.S. and Afghanistan over a number of years will have formed the connections necessary mm -hmm. in order to play a role in the supply chain and using the military as cover. That's been going on since the Vietnam War. There's no point in Americans denying this, that this goes on. Yes, our boys do traffic drugs. Not right. all of not all of them, but there is a hardcore criminal element. And with the gangs infiltrating, uh, gang uh, gang members, organized gangs infiltrating the military, which is reported, you probably you can show a, a headline for that. That's a 2007. Mm -hmm. And also the military, uh, who is also recruiting ex-cons. So this is the perfect storm, Rob, for marrying what's going on overseas in terms of military theater and narcotics trafficking with the organized crime and the things that we're experiencing here within our borders in America. It's the perfect storm. I agree. The ex-con story is really disturbing, and that's from 2007. And mm -hmm. um, if you could, guys could throw that on screen, I mean, before, if you had any kind of record, you could not get into the Army. And now they're taking anybody. Sure. And, you know, and what do you expect? These guys go, they're guarding a poppy field. They're, they're bringing fertilizer to these guys. They're seeing money transfer for this stuff. And they, they see what's going on. And, yeah, you know, what capitalist wouldn't go, hey, you know, I want a piece of the action. I want, I want to get in on that. And, and so you get a guy who's of rank, who's... He's a drill sergeant, you know, and, and he gets up into the system, he takes it further, and then he bring, comes back home and he spreads the wealth to his boys. And it's, and it's he's working, really disturbing. And he's working with uh, dozens of other military guys uh, to make these deals happen. Let's not be naive. You right. know, J Jimmy, J Jimmy, uh, John, John Boyd. Walton from Peoria, Illinois, doesn't know a damn thing about trafficking drugs or what to do with them. But I'll tell you, if, you, if you're from an organized gang in a major U.S. city, you know exactly when you see it, you know what it's worth, you right. know how to cut it, you know how to cut it, you know what the street value is, they'll do the math right, right in their head straight away. So they are definitely primed to be able to take this product from the end of the supply chain and put it onto the street. They are the guys who can do that end of the heavy lifting as far as any military uh, trafficking drugs into the United States from either Mexico or from Afghanistan or from anywhere else. And I'll tell you what, the, 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 there are other countries uh, are doing exactly the same thing. Uh, the French military and any country that, or the British military, any country that has a navy overseas and has ships or has a major C-130 giant planes flying in and out with cargo, they have the ability to do exactly the same thing. And I can say off the record that I have, can confirm reports that they are. I can't say specifics uh, because it was told to me in confidence, but that is the case. Well, I don't doubt that, and that's definitely going to come out. As more of this happens, people are going to slip up, and we'll find it, and we'll keep reporting on it. Uh, real quick, I want to I conclude here. Uh, you've got a, an article coming out about the Trevon Martin case. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going to be with, with that article tomorrow and what we can expect to see. Okay. Uh, firstly, there's a lot of uh, developments over the weekend with the Trayvon Martin case, but more so in, in the synchronicity that we're all, our brains are all working. Uh, Kurt Nemo was uh, psychically working on the same line as, as I was, and Alex ran with it this morning, talking about the race war in America. So I'm going to break down, firstly, in one article, I'm going to break down there is a race war which is being pushed and being engineered by the media and by political, uh, partisan political interests in this country. And I'll tell you exactly, we know exactly where this race war is headed. 
and I'll talk about that tomorrow. And it's really headed towards what's the next phase of the race war is a class warfare. Okay, and that that's already been primed by the Occupy movement over the last uh, six or eight months. The, the other thing is I'm going to have some breaking news about what's happening with the actual George Zimmerman case, where it's going and what, where it's going to end up. And that'll be an InfoWars or an Alex Jones show exclusive. Uh, and this is information that uh, not, no one else in the media is really touching right now. We're going to be first on that. And also a few other things about fa a fake news story, which was pr put out and promoted by the Southern Poverty Law Center mm -hmm. uh, this, this past weekend. We're going to fully debunk it. I've spoke to the uh, Sanford Police Department already. We've got a statement from them which debunks the story. And so that'll be all in the news tomorrow morning. Well, we look forward to that because the mainstream media seems to be only interested in pushing a race war, not in presenting facts a as they are. And, and so I can't wait to see that report tomorrow. Patrick, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you shortly. Thanks, Rob. All right. Well, that's our show today. Obviously, it's not good news. I mean, we have our troops coming home and dealing drugs with agents who are posed as gang members from Mexico. Um, we've got we've got the mainstream media trying to start a race war. And, um, you know, I just want to say a little bit a little bit on this. Um, you know, don't don't fall for it. It's we're not we should not be fighting with each other. And that's what they want. You know, there is. Um, 99.5% in this quarter percent people, those are the ones that are controlling things. And those are the ones we need to expose. It's not the guy down the street. It's not the hillbillies down the hill. It's not even the gang members. We all need to figure out that we all have to be on the same team. We can't be preying on each other. I mean, I mean, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. We really have to watch out for this because the media is trying to start a race war. They would love to see this happen, and the police would love nothing more than to come in and crack people's heads, because then they'll be justified in doing it. So, yeah, get prepared, get ready, but also inform yourselves of the true nature of what is going on, and, and do not listen to the Southern Poverty Law Center, because they don't care about poverty, they don't care about the, the Southerners, they don't care about anything but creating more division. That's what they're interested in, is creating more division. So, uh, with that... I'm Rob Dew. This has been the InfoWars Nightly News. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing. Uh, it allows us to buy more cameras, send people out to get reports, uh, hire more reporters. We're having our reporter contest right now. Um, there's still plenty of time. We have till the end of the month. You have till the end of the month to get in and submit. You only need a 10 minute or less video. Be sure you put your slate. Be sure you read the rules. I've been, I'm in charge of this contest and I've been sending a lot of emails to people asking them to add their information. We want to know your name, what state you're from, and what you did on the video, whether it's writing, producing, the camera work, the editing. We want to know all that, and it makes you look good, too. So please put all that information there. You can put extra information, too, if you want. It, but put that information there. It's part of the rules. There's a reporter contest. We started it at the end of March. Uh, we only have you know four rules. We put some guidelines in there for some things we'd like to see. But, you know, we want people to wow us, too. We want to see what you can come up with, and we want to see how bad you want to be an InfoWars reporter. We've gotten a lot of great submissions, and a lot of people really, you know, interested in this. You know, we put no cap on submissions, so keep doing reports. All this is doing is putting more information out there in the mainstream that other people are going to come in and look at. And, you know, you never know. You may be, we may have the next Alex Jones submitting uh, a report here. We don't know that. I mean, it, it really is. The sky's the limit, and it's up to you. You know, get off the couch. Don't be a couch potato. You know, get active in what we're doing. It's not hard. It doesn't have to look flashy. It's easy to take uh, simple stuff and make it look really good. I remember this one guy. Um, I forget his name offhand, but he, he did his slate. He wrote all the information on the back of his car and shot it for seven seconds. That's all you need to do. You can hold a poster board up. You can write it on the back of a, of a you know, milk carton, whatever. You know, just get the information in. Make a good report. Make it compelling. Make it news. And we may even feature it here on the, on the nightly news. So get your entries in. You have uh, less than a month. And with that, I'll bid you good night. Until we see you tomorrow, it's InfoWars Nightly News.
I really enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and, uh, well, we resist them via a free market system. Hello, my fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here, introducing you to the Pro Pure family of gravity fed filters. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic. And one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non detectable levels these poisons are gravity fed filters. And Pro Pure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the ProPure big brush finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the ProPure King large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the ProPure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch, is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have the glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalist obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure gravity filter system. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. Pro Pure is the name.